Thanks a lot for being here today. Thanks a lot, uh, Nerha, for, for chairing this session. Um, so today I will present a, a paper which is joined uh, with uh, Gianluca Russo from uh, UPF, who is here in the audience, on uh, the long-run effects of, uh, of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. So the vast majority of civil conflicts are basically episodes of recurring violence following an initial conflict. And to break uh, this cycle of violence, one kind of institution that has become increasingly popular in the last uh, decades around the world are truth and reconciliation commissions. So this is an institution uh, which aims at establishing uh, the facts, uh, letting the different groups of individuals telling their stories and uh, uh, reaching a common narrative of, of the past. And by doing so, Truth and Reconciliation Commissions, or just TRCs, uh, are, are believed to foster peace and to promote inter interracial uh, trust. However, despite the wide usage and uh, support uh, that these kind of institutions uh, get around the world, the effectiveness uh, remains, he uh, remains heavily debated. Okay? And uh, so in particular, they are accused of uh, having detrimental psychological effects on the victims, of emphasizing everyone's misdeeds in the, instead of just the misdeeds of the main perpetrators, and of ignoring uh, some socioeconomic dimensions of peace building. So in this project, uh, we, uh, we use one of the most iconic uh, TRC that has ever been created, uh, and this is the one uh, in, uh, that was established in South Africa right after the apartheid. Um, to, to study what is the causal effect of truth and reconciliation commissions on uh, political beliefs uh, trust uh, to, toward uh, institutions and inter-ethnic trust. So after the end of the apartheid, uh, uh, South Africa underwent a radical um, political transformation and one of the keystones of this uh, political transformation uh, was uh, the establishment of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in 95. In the following few years, uh, the, the commission received uh, the testimonies of more than 22,000 victims, and it received uh, more than 7,000 amnesty applications. The TRC had a massive influence on the country, and also like in, just in other countries, and an important reason for the large influence uh, that the TRC had on South Africa is the extensive uh, TV coverage uh, that it received to the point uh, that it uh, quickly became one of the most mediated events ever taking place in Africa. One particular emission that played a special uh, role is the Truth Commission Special Reports, which was the flagship program on the TRC from the uh, SABC, which is the, the national uh, channel in, in South Africa. The program was aired every week of, uh, between April 96 and March 98, and it quickly reached uh, a really uh, huge uh, audience, uh, allowing uh, the, the TRC to, to, to become uh, more known by the, the population at large. So in this project, uh, we will basically uh, look at how exposure to the work of the TRC through this uh, specific program uh, can have long-run effects on political attitudes, uh, etc. So to be more specific about this, uh, we basically use uh, an empirical strategy which is uh, very similar to, to what Pedro uh, presented uh, like two presentations ago. Uh, so we collect data on all of the SABC antennas that were uh, airing uh, this uh, particular emission in, in 95, and we use uh, this information to reconstruct uh, two types of signals, okay? So the first one being the actual signal strength that you will receive in a given ward in South Africa. We do that for the whole country. That's what you can see here uh, on the first map, so bottom left. Obviously, since a uh, signal reception might be uh, endogenous, so we want to capture variations uh, in uh, signal strength uh, that comes uh, solely from topographic uh, obstacles and so on. So for this reason, we also 
uh, simulate a hypothetical signal strength free of any topographic uh, obstructions. If you take uh, the difference uh, between the two, it basically gives you uh, the, the variation that solely comes from uh, topographic abstractions. Uh, this is what you can see on the second map. And so we are interested in the relationship uh, between exposure to the TRC and different uh, measures related to political attitudes or, or, or trust. Uh, the, the main outcomes uh, will come uh, from different waves of the Afrobarometer, and we are specifically uh, interested in two layers of heterogeneity. The first one being uh, along the, the, the racial line, so does, does the TRC have different effects on the white population and uh, the black population? And the second uh, layer of heterogeneity we are interested in uh, is uh, the, about uh, residential segregation. So does the effect of uh, the TRC on the population uh, differ according to, um, to segregation? Before showing you the main outcomes, uh, here we just uh, use predetermined outcomes uh, from the 91 census to show you that exposure to the uh, TRC is uh, uncorrelated uh, with uh, district level characteristics uh, such as population, share of white uh, or, or black uh, individuals in the population, uh, share of Africana speakers, and so on. Okay, so moving to the main uh, outcomes now. Um, in this table, uh, we, we look at the relationship between exposure to the TRC and uh, political uh, attitudes. And in particular, we use uh, one question of the Afrobarometer where respondents asked uh, for which political party they would vote if elections were held uh, tomorrow. And we just classify political parties uh, according to the fact that uh, they might be predominantly black or predominantly uh, white. And what we find, uh, and that's what you can see in columns uh, one and three, is that getting exposure to uh, the work of the TRC does not really affect the political beliefs of uh, black uh, respondents. However, in, uh, when we focus on the white respondents, uh, so that's uh, columns two and four, uh, we do find a, a strong effect on, on them. So white respondents who get more exposure to the, to the work of the TRC become much more likely to support a predominantly black political party. So let's now turn uh, to the interaction uh, with uh, residential segregation. So here the measure of um, segregation is a, a Gini index uh, based on the 91 census, and this is uh, calculated at the district level. And what's really interesting here is that, um, so let's uh, just focus on column six here, is that uh, yes, uh, white respondents have uh, become much more likely to support a, predominant, a predominantly black political party when they get more exposure to the work of the TRC, but this effect entirely vanishes uh, when they live in a, in a totally segregated district. So this really suggests a, a possible uh, compl complementarity between the TRC and also the possibility of having interracial uh, contacts as measured by uh, a Gini index in, in this case. Uh, next, uh, we look at uh, trust uh, in uh, different kinds of institutions. Here we just show you results for trust in the president, in the parliament, and in the police, and we find broadly uh, consistent results, the TRC having strong effects on trust in these uh, different uh, institutions, but again, two layers of heterogeneity that appear to be very important. First, uh, the effects on the white respondents are much stronger, and secondly, um, these effects uh, become much weaker in uh, highly segregated areas. We finally uh, have a look at uh, interracial uh, trust, and here the sample size is, uh, is uh, much, uh, much smaller, so these results are, are noisier and should be taken with uh, a grain of salt, uh, but uh, we again find consistent results uh, with exposure to the work of the TRC having uh, uh, a larger effect on white respondents 
and uh, a larger effect on, uh, well, a weaker effect in segregated uh, areas. Okay, um, let me uh, jump to, to the conclusion. So here we showed you preliminary results from uh, a work in progress. Uh, so in the future, we plan to obviously complement this uh, with many other data sources and to also look at the downstream economic uh, consequences of the TRC. Um, but a, s a few results uh, do uh, uh, are already very clear. The first one is that truth and reconciliation commissions uh, do seem to have an important effect on uh, political attitudes and trust. The second one is that uh, you do have important heterogeneities along the, the racial line. So in this case, effects on the white population uh, tend to be uh, much stronger than the effects on the black population. And finally, these effects uh, vanish entirely in highly segregated areas, uh, which, as I said earlier, um, might suggest a, p a potential uh, complementarity between the work of the TRC and uh, intergroup contact. Um, and the second thing which is interesting uh, in, in this case is that we need to keep in mind that South Africa remains a, a, a highly segregated country. Uh, so, so this uh, obviously plays a, an important role in the interpretation of, of these results. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, yeah, looking forward to the discussion. Thank you.